Good morning and welcome to our worship service as we gather to worship and praise our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. This is Baccalaureate Sunday. This is a Sunday when we give um, thanks and praise for our young people who are graduating from high school and they will be incorporated into our prayers today. Our radio broadcast is sponsored to the glory of God and in honor of their 45th wedding anniversary by Mike and Chris Hamlin. And our altar flowers are given to the glory of God and in loving memory of Diana Wadke by a friend. So let us begin our worship service today with our confession and forgiveness. I would ask you to please rise. We gather together this morning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Gathered by the Holy Spirit, let us confess our sins. Lord God, who makes all things new, we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for us and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare unto you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our opening hymn is number 385 in the green hymnal, What Wondrous Love Is This? Thank you.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also, and also with, you. with you. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, you hold together all things in heaven and on earth. In your great mercy, receive the prayers of all your children and give to all the world the spirit of your truth and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We'll continue with our special music from Tom Nelson. Thank you. 
Our first reading today is from Acts chapter 17, verses 22 through 31. Paul stood in front of the Areopagus and said, Athenians, I see how extremely religious you are in every way. For as I went through the city and looked carefully at the objects of your worship, I found among them an altar with the inscription, To an unknown God. What therefore you worship is as unknown, this I proclaim to you. The God who made the, the world and everything in it, he who is Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in shrines made by human hands, nor is he served by human hands, as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mortals life and breath and all of all things. From one ancestor he made all nations to inhabit the whole earth, and he allotted the times of their existence and the boundaries of the places where they would live, so that they would search for God and perhaps grope for him and find him, though indeed he is not far from each, of, each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being, as even some of your own poets have said, for we too are his offspring. Since we are God's offspring, we ought not to think that the deity is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the art and imagination of mortals. While God has overlooked the times of human ignorance, now he commands all people everywhere to repent, because he has fixed a day on which he will have the world judged in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed. And of this he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Our psalm today is from Psalm 66, verses 8 through 20. Bless our God, you peoples. Let the sound of praise be heard. Our God has kept us among the living and has not allowed our feet to slip. For you, O God, have tested us. You have tried us just as silver is tried. You brought us into the net. You laid heavy burdens upon our backs. You let people ride over our heads. We went through fire and water but you brought us out into a place of refreshment. I will enter your house with burnt offerings and will pay you my vows, those that I promised with my lips and spoke with my mouth when I was in trouble. I will offer you burnt offerings of fatlings with the smoke of rams. I will give you oxen and goats. Come and listen, all you who believe, and I will tell you what God has done for me. I called out to God with my mouth and praised the Lord with my tongue. If I had cherished evil in my heart, the Lord would not have heard me. But, in truth, God has heard me and has attended to the sound of my prayer. Be, blessed be God, who has not rejected my prayer, nor withheld unfailing love from me. Our second reading is from 1 Peter chapter 13, verses 13 through 22. Who will harm you if you are eager to do what is good? But even if you do suffer for doing what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear what they fear, and do not be intimidated. But in your heart sanctify Christ as Lord. Always be ready to make your defense to anyone who demands from you an accounting for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and reverence. Keep your conscience clear, so that when you are maligned, those who abuse you for your good conduct in Christ may be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if suffering should be God's will, than to suffer for doing evil. For Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit. 
in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey, when God waited patiently in the days of Noah during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is, eight persons, were saved through water. And baptism, which this prefigured, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God, with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. The Holy Gospel according to John, the 14th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Our lesson begins. Jesus said to the disciples, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me. And those who love me will be loved by my Father and I will love them and reveal myself to them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, O Christ. Please be seated. Let us pray. Dear Father in heaven, we give you grateful thanks this day for all the blessings that you've bestowed upon us as your children. Show us your will and your ways, dear Lord, in the week to come. Bless our graduates. Give them the assurance that you are with them at all times. Strengthen us in your love this day. Keep us safe from all plagues, all worries, all troubles, and all sorrows. We ask your presence in our hearts through the power of the Advocate, the Holy Spirit. In Jesus Christ's name we ask and pray. Amen. There are times in our lives when we have to make a decision whether to follow Jesus or to walk away. We are faced with a spur of the moment decision which causes us to think, shall I say something now or hope that someone else will come along and speak to this person about God? Today we read about the Apostle Paul in the city of Athens. This Greek city was one of the intellectual centers of its day. Here the philosophers and intellectuals and students would gather to discuss the latest in philosophy and theology. But Athens was also a pagan city and there were thousands of statues erected as idols to the various gods, the small G gods that human beings tend to worship. It was said that there were more idols in Athens than in the rest of Greece combined. The Greeks were a religious people only in the sense that they had a different god for almost every aspect of their lives. They had even built and dedicated an altar to an unknown god, just in case they may have missed one of the other gods. Now, it would have been easy for Paul to shy away from this city, from even opening his mouth in that pagan city. But Luke records, Paul held discussions in the synagogue with the Jews and the Gentiles who worshipped God and also in the public square with the people who happened to come by. He debated with the great teachers and philosophers of Athens. Paul knew that if he was going to spread the news about Jesus Christ, he had to step out of his comfort zone and speak the truth 
about the Savior. Now it is much easier to hang around with other Christians who believe as we do than it is to witness to strangers. We Christians worship the same God, the same Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We share basically the same values, and we speak the same language about sin and confession and redemption and Holy Communion and baptism. It is easy to be around people who believe just as you believe. And it is human nature for people to gravitate towards others who are more like themselves. Paul was no different. We read that when he came to Athens, we notice that Paul, first of all, had deep discussions with fellow Jews and Gentiles about God, people who believed in God. But Paul intentionally made the decision to step out from his comfort zone in order to share the good news with those who were worshiping pagan gods and following pagan ways. Paul tried to make the most of his opportunity to witness. To hesitate or to put it off would mean losing an opportunity to share the good news. How many of us have let a decisive moment go by and afterwards regretted not witnessing when we had the chance. We need to be deliberate when it comes to talking about Jesus to unbelievers or those who have fallen away from their faith. Now throughout my time in college, throughout my time in the military, I always kept my Bible with me. It was sitting on a table next to my bed. I refused to be ashamed of what I believed in. You who are graduating shortly, I would give you this advice. Stay close to the Word. Stay close to the Bible. Read your Bible regularly. Go to church. For those who go away to college, you're going to come into the same challenges that Paul faced in the pagan city of Athens. People who will challenge your faith, who will use human logic to shame you, to make you back down. Yes, you are going out into the world now, both the workaday world, the world of college, and the world of the military. You need to take Jesus Christ with you. Up to this point in your life, your faith, your understanding of God has been spoon-fed to you through your parents, through the church, and through what you study. Now you are going out on your own. And the quickest way to become lost is to forget where you came from to forget what you truly believe in. Keep the word close to your heart. Read your scripture. Go to church. Pray, pray, pray. We need to be deliberate in our faith life. And now you will be on your own in that respect. You'll be left to your own devices. You can stay close to Jesus, or you can become the prodigal. Be careful in worshiping other idols. There are thousands of them out there. I will tell you what Jesus told us. Put your faith not in humankind, in whom there is no hope. The hope we have as Christians is that Jesus Christ is with us the whole way. He walks with us and he talks with us. He keeps us away from danger and troubles. Now, witnessing to the love of Jesus Christ is another level of discipleship. 
It's easy to say I'm a Christian and never say a word about it to anyone else. That is the easy way out. But when someone needs rescuing, there are risks and dangers that we must be willing to take. It might seem laughable to say the biggest risk is simply to talk to them, to share with them, to befriend them. There is a familiar adage that goes, make a friend, be a friend, bring a friend to Christ. Before we can talk to anyone about God, we need to establish a relationship with that person. This does not take years to accomplish. When Jesus met the woman at the well, he first asked for a drink of water, and he started a conversation up with her. This showed her that he accepted her in spite of her immoral life. She was the exact person that Jesus should not be talking to. She led an immoral life. She was a Samaritan. She was a woman, all which were abhorrent in that day and age, and yet Jesus speaks to her. And simply speaking to her, he validates her as a fellow human being. When Paul started speaking to the Athenians, he didn't launch into an explanation of why they were wrong and what they needed to do to be saved. He first established a relationship with his listeners. He flattered them by noting that the Athenians were very religious people. He then referred to their, alt their altar with the inscription to an unknown God, saying, you have been worshiping him without knowing who he is, and now I wish to tell you about him. This would have gotten the interest of the Greek teachers because they wanted to know more about the unknown God. So Paul talks about God saying, God made the world, and since he is Lord of heaven and earth, he doesn't need a temple to live in. God gives life and breath to all living creatures. God created all the people of the world. God is not far away from us and wants us to seek him. Then Paul cleverly quotes two Greek poets describing the relationship of God to humanity. Can we see what Paul has done here? He hasn't hit them over the head and tried to convert them. He didn't use a bunch of Jesus talk. He didn't invoke the law as to who they worship. He has built a relationship with them, and now they are listening to him. Paul is a lot smarter than they realize. He knows you can't just come in from the cold and expect people to listen to the important message that he has to tell him without first establishing relationship. He first built a rapport with them, just like Jesus did with the Samaritan woman at the well. There are lots of people in our lives that we have never taken the time to get to know, to actually listen to. Your average human being listens simply to wait for their chance to speak. Albert Einstein once said, you can learn absolutely nothing while you are speaking. You can only learn when you are listening. There are lots of people who need to hear you, to hear your witness to the love of God. Who knows what opportunities will arise on this journey that you graduates are taking. Around every corner there will be an opportunity to witness to the love of God as it has been witnessed to you through your parents and your loved ones. For you see, love is not only of God, love is God. And God is love. 
Love entails accepting people where they're at. Love entails lifting them up and praying for them and sharing with them their journey, not in judgment, but in realization that there is a better life out there through Jesus Christ. Even though Paul was surrounded by the pagan statues of the Greek gods and confronted by some very clever people, nevertheless, Paul puts his fears aside and deliberately grasps the moment. He established a relationship with these very clever teachers of Athens. He then goes on to tell them about God through Jesus Christ. When Jesus spoke to the woman at the well, he took advantage of the circumstances and started to talk about living water and got into matters re relating to her eternal welfare. It's at this very point that most of us get tripped up. We do not believe that our witness to Jesus Christ is perfect, and it is not. At its core, it's simply a story about being lost, but now being found. Being blind, but now being able to see. It's because of this inability to share that we often lose the moment. There is a window of opportunity to talk about our faith, and it opens up from time to time. And if we don't make the decision and take that opportunity, it can be lost. I have made this mistake myself many, many times. When afterwards I thought, you know, if I just would have said this. What we need to do is take a deep breath and trust in God with all our heart, soul, and mind, knowing that whatever we say in his son's name will be of consequence to that person we're speaking to. They may be angry when they first hear it. They may blow it off, but it's still there. The seed has been planted. We do not lead with the idea that we are perfect people or perfect Christians. Quite the opposite. We realize that we are sinners who have been saved by grace alone. We confess that there are too many times when we have missed the opportunity to speak about God, to witness to Jesus Christ, and to speak about our faith. Times we have failed to invite others to the place where they can hear the gospel. But for this, God forgives us. That in the core of everything, is what it means to be a follower of Jesus Christ. We are forgiven. When we stumble, we are lifted up. And we are charged to lift up others as well, making it known to them that they are loved. They are loved with a love that is beyond comprehension. A father who would sacrifice his own son that they might live. Can we comprehend this kind of love? The Greek word for it is agape. Agape, a love that expects nothing in return, a love that simply is. A pre-existing condition, if you will, of God loving you from the time he knit you together in your mother's womb until the time you are lowered down into that grave. And beyond that grave, his son has prepared a place for you. That where he is, you may be also. And he's coming to get all of us, eventually. So fear not. Our destination has been vouchsafed by the Son of God on the cross of Calvary. We are his children, as are those who have yet to realize it. Those who need to hear those words, God loves you. Jesus Christ died for you. 
You need not fear anything. So go forth and spread the news. In Jesus Christ's holy name we pray. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all of our understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.
Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Dear God, we pray for our graduates today and we lift them up before you. Everett Anderson, Jack Bowles, Alyssa Charette, Christopher Hollenbeck, Madeline Holmes, Harrison Klausner, Kaylin Milila, Nicholas Opoka, Cassidy Peterson, Anna Perkola, Austin Plonke, Luke Thiessen, Colin Watkins, Madeline Yake. We thank you so much for these young adults who we love and for the work that you are continuing to do in their lives. They are a gift to us and to many others. And during this season of new beginnings, we ask that you would make their way clear. We ask that you would keep their footsteps firm and remind them that you are with them always. May they sense the freshness of your spirit over their lives in amazing new ways. May they be strengthened to witness to their faith. May they be instilled with hope and for the new roads that you have in store for them. Bless them this day, dear Lord, in all days coming forward. In Jesus Christ's holy name, amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. And now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you forever in his grace. Amen. I'd ask you to bow your heads before God and receive his benediction for you. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 742 in With One Voice.
At this time, we will be having a temple talk from the president of our congregation, Jeff White. Thank you. Good morning, my brothers and sisters in Christ. As Christians, we need each other to help share our burdens and praise our blessings. In Hebrews chapter 10, it says, And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds, but not giving up meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. Although these verses 24 and 25 encourage us to be physically together, its main goal is to impart the value in spurring one another to loving and helping others. In Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 7, it says, Also seek the peace and prosperity of the civity to which I have carried you into exile. Pray to the Lord for it, because if it prospers, you too will prosper. This verse tells us that even while being exiled from their normal community, God reminded the Israelites to seek peace within the situation they have found themselves. Please know that we on the council and pastor also strongly desire to return to our normal worship services. We want to see you and share in the joy of our blessings from Jesus Christ, However, it is our responsibility as leaders to put the well-being of our congregation, our extended family, you, above our desires for normalcy. We will follow the recommendations of our gov government on when we can begin to gather again. Some have expressed concern that we are not congregating together and have succumbed to the rule of the government over God. I also worry about following worldly direction However, that is not the same as following reasonable government direction. In Romans 13, Paul wrote, Let everyone be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except that which God has established. The authorities that, have, that exist have been established by God. This is Paul's reminder that God is in control, even when it appears to us like he is not. I think of the story of Daniel, who was a dedicated servant to the kingdom, king of Babylon, until the rules kept him from worshiping God even in his own home, for which he was sentenced to the lion's den. 
It is just an example of God's expectation for us that regardless of our opinions of executive orders and legislative decisions, until we have been until we have been kept from worshiping Jesus Christ as our Savior, we will accept the governing authorities of our community. We will continue to provide worship services via the radio and YouTube so that you may be able to worship our Lord, even if in a physically distant way. Our faith is not bounded by the walls of this church. The Holy Spirit is with us always, even when we are not with each other. Please know that as a council we pray for the ending of this disease, but also for your comfort and peace through the grace of Jesus Christ. Personally, I pray daily for understanding and God's guidance through all of this. We will continue to monitor the recommendations from the experts and will return as soon as we are able to do so safely, both legally and as recommended by health professionals. And when we do, it will be with the additional precautions, such as physical distancing and probably face masks. It will be a gradual return to being physically present with the community, just like we all desire. But with that being said, if you need something, or if you just need a listening ear, please call us. We love you and are here to encourage you and to help you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. I will close with a reminder from Paul in 1 Thessalonians, which he says, Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. God bless you all. Amen.